Hey guys, it's Surgeon here, and welcome to my guide on getting started with farming. Now, this was a highly requested video from the last video. In fact, there's a few comments right there, there, and all over the screen. A lot of people wanted this. So, a uh, couple prefaces for this. I'm just going to be talking about what some of the basics are, how to get started with farming, a uh, couple good ways to actually um, boost up your levels in the very beginning so you don't actually have to train. And I'm also going to be talking about just basic training techniques as well, and tips that I did from getting to 99 farming. So, uh, with that being said, if you guys do enjoy the video, give it a like. If you want to see more of my content, go ahead and subscribe. If you want to leave me feedback, comment section down below is for that. Join the CC if you're looking for a place to actually come hang out. There's been a lot of us in there recently. And we actually, um, we opened up a Discord. So I'm actually going to have a link to that Discord down in the description. And if you're looking for an invite link as well, you can also just hop into the CC and ask for a link to the Discord. And we'll be more than happy to give you a link to there. So, with that being said, let's jump into this and hope you guys enjoy. Let's start off with talking about some of the basics. Some of the basics are you're going to need some tools. These are your rake, your spade, your seed dipper, your watering can, secateurs, trowel, buckets, and compost. All of this can be stored with your tool leprechaun, which is next to basically every farming patch in RuneScape. Now, I'm going to talk about all these tools individually. So the rake you're going to be using to clear weeds, which you have to do in order to be able to plant something in a patch. A spade you're going to be using to plant trees and to also harvest your crops. A seed dipper is used to plant allotments, flowers, herbs, bushes, and hops. A watering can is going to be used to either water saplings or to water your allotment patches or your flowers. Secateurs are going to be using, normal secateurs are going to be using to prune diseased leaves off of trees to cure them from disease since they don't use a plant cure. A trowel you're going to use to plant uh, tree seeds into a filled plant pot to turn it into a sapling. Buckets are obviously what they are, they're buckets. And then you have both normal compost and super compost that you can store inside the tool leprechaun. And what this is, is compost is basically used, decrease the chance of getting a disease patch, and it also increases your yield. Let's talk about compost. So next to the four or five major patches in RuneScape, which I'll talk about in a minute, there's something called a compost bin. Now, Depending on what you put in there, you have to put 15 items. Depending on what you put in there, you're either going to get compost or super compost. Pretty much you should always use super compost. And the reason is, is that if you buy watermelons and put 15 watermelons inside the compost bin, it will give you 15 super compost. The price of a watermelon right now is less than 10 GP. It is incredibly cheap. Uh, there is no reason why you shouldn't be using super compost. Do not buy super compost from the GE. It is not worth it. Just buy watermelons and make your own super compost. Now the reason you're going to use super compost is because on herbs and allotments it actually increases the minimum yield from a patch. So you're going to want to use super compost on this to basically guarantee that whenever you harvest something you're going to be getting more than if you use either normal compost or no compost at all. As well as using super compost is going to decrease the chances of your patch getting disease and dying. Before we start talking about the different types of patches I want to go over a couple notes and a couple tips. In this, I will not be talking about Tithe Farm in any way. Um, if you want a guide on that, I can do it. Um, but personally, I have never done Tithe Farm. It does have some good rewards, such as the uh, seed box, but I personally have never done it, so I'm not going to talk about it in this. Some tips. Um, when you are harvesting allotments, herbs, uh, flowers, whatever, you can actually use your harvest. You can left click on it and then click on the tool leprechaun and they will actually note it for you. So that is my big recommendation and also another recommendation I'm going to do for you guys is when you are doing trees, um, you can pay 200 gold to have the farmer chop the tree down for you and if you're going for experience, this is generally a lot faster because it's going to actually increase the speed at which you can plant your trees since you don't have to spend any time chopping them down. Alright, let's get into this actual guide. Now with the basics being covered, let's start talking about the different kinds of patches. Starting off, we're going to talk about the allotment patches. These are your bread and butter basic first kind of patch you're ever going to use. Now, you're going to find these in five locations around RuneScape normally. You're going to find them in Canifus next to Port Phasmatis. You're going to find them in the Cabbage Patch uh, in the, near the Falador Farm. You're going to find them in the Arty Farm, which is right next to where the Master Farmer is and right where the Fishing Guild is. You're going to find them in Catherby, right behind the bank, and you also find them near the Hasidious House in the southeastern corner of Zaya. There's also a sixth 
Allotment patch that you unlock once you've done uh, the Great Brain Robbery on Harmony Island that you can also use. However, this is not a very widely used allotment patch. But for all intents and purposes, I won't be talking about that uh, farming patch since this is a how to get started farming guide. Now on the screen, you're going to see the allotments require three of each seed in order to plant. This is very unique because they're the only patch that's like this, but every allotment patch that you use, you're going to require three seeds. Also, something else about allotment patches is that you can pay to have them protected, meaning that they won't die. A farmer will basically look after them. Or you can plant a flower, and when that flower fully blooms, that flower will protect certain plants. And I have that up on the screen right now. Basically, if you wanted to plant sweet corns, all you'd have to do is create a scarecrow, put that in the flower patch, and then that would prevent your sweet corns from ever getting diseased. The growth time of these also changes based on whatever allotment you're doing. So go ahead and make sure you reference this video or you reference that picture to tell you what it means. Now it says four by 10 minutes, five by 10, six by 10. I'm not gonna get into too much detail because it's a very advanced technique to talk about, but basically what that's saying is that it takes four growth cycles or five growth cycles and each growth cycle takes 10 minutes. So all you do is just multiply five times 10, four times 10, and that's about how long it should take for whatever allotment you're doing. I'm not gonna get into growth cycles in this video because it's a kind of an advanced technique, but we'll save that for another video. That's the basics behind allotments. Let's move on to flowers. Now, I alluded to this in the last segment, but before I get into that whole protection thing, flowers require one seed to plant and they're in the same locations as your normal allotment patches, excluding the Harmony Isle patch. There is no flower patch on Harmony Island, but the other five locations that I talked about previously are where your flower patches are. So, flowers are unique um, in that they can actually protect allotments for you. Some of them are also rather expensive. Uh, your marigolds and your limpwort roots are actually relatively expensive. Um, so if you're trying to plant for profit, those would probably be what you want to go after. But for the main purpose of flowers is that you want to grow them to protect your crops. And more importantly, uh, the nasturimus, or however you pronounce it, I have no idea. But it protects your watermelons, which is the highest allotment you can use. So most people tend to plant that and then plant their watermelon seeds as well. There's no way for you to be able to watch after these. There is no actual way to protect these. You simply just have to use super compost and hope that they eventually grow. And their growth cycles are slightly shorter than allotment patches. All right, everyone's favorite patch, the herb patch, the money maker. This only requires one seed, just like flowers, and they're planted in seven locations. They're the exact same locations as the allotments and flowers. However, there's two additional spots. On top of the Troll Stronghold, once you've completed Myron's Big Adventure, and Harmony Island. This is only available after you've done the Elite Mauritania Diaries, so I'm not going to talk about that patch at all for the simple fact that this is a starter guide for farming. They also cannot be protected in any way, shape, or form. No flowers, no farmers, nothing. You cannot protect them. Some of these patches are automatically protected, such as the... Um, patch on Zaya with the Hasidious uh, house and the one on top of the Troll Stronghold is also protected by my arm. So those will be automatically protected and they won't die. I also have all the herbs listed on the screen right now. As you can see, you're not really going to be farming herbs for experience. This is mainly used for money and to be honest, when you're harvesting herbs, you're really, if you're harvesting them from XP, it's minimal. You want to be trying to either maximize experience with these since it's so small, or just go ahead and start farming money. Most people will plant renards or toad flax or snapdragons to maximize their profit whenever they do this. Myself personally, I did dwarf weeds because I wanted to maximize the experience that I got from these, but it is up to you at the end of the day. These are your money makers. Always use super compost when it comes to herbs. Now the experience is going to start rolling in. Let's talk about trees. These can be planted in five locations. They can be planted at the Varrock Palace, Falador Park, Gnome Stronghold, Taverly, and west of Lumbridge Castle. These are much different than the other patches we just talked about in that you do not actually use a seed to plant them. Instead, what you're going to do instead is you're going to take a tree seed, whether it's an acorn, yew seed, whatever, you're going to use a trowel and put that seed into a filled plant pot if you don't have a filled plant pot, you just have a plant pot, all you do is take the plant pot over to a weeded farming patch, so a patch that has all the weeds taken out, and then use the pot with a trowel in your inventory. Use the pot on the soil, and it'll fill it up for you. Once you've done that, use a trowel to put the seed inside the filled plant pot, water that, water that seedling, and then wait a little bit for it to turn into a sapling. Once it's turned into a sapling, then what you're going to do is use that sapling 
on the tree patch once you've taken all the weeds off of it and then with a spade you will actually plant that sapling it will then proceed to grow now trees trees have a varying growth time ranging from three hours and 20 minutes for your oak trees all the way up to eight hours for your magic trees so these do take a long time to grow however these are where your most of your experience is going to come in they are expensive as all get out they are super expensive thanks to the zolver nerf now however you need to be planting these whenever you can this is how you're going to get the bulk of your experience when it comes to farming so whatever tree seeds you can afford you want to be maximizing that for me personally when i did 99 farming i did most of mine with willows and maples because i couldn't be fucked to pay 70k for U seeds or 150k for magic seeds. U seeds now are almost 90k and magic seeds are 200k. Maple seeds are like 50k now. Like it's ridiculous. But buy what you can afford because it's where the bulk of your experience is going to come in. And by doing your hourly or so herb runs, you should be able to make back some of the losses that you incur from buying these tree seeds in the first place. Again, I say it a lot. This is where a lot of your experience is going to come in. Especially if you do maple trees, that's 5 hours and 20 minutes for it to grow. So you can do, if you play 10 hours a day, you can probably get about 2. Uh, you can get 2, you can get 1 in the morning. Actually, you can probably get 3. You can do 1 in the morning, 1 midday, and then 1 before you go to sleep. If you have the opportunity to do that. Talking about payment, with using super compost, your trees are only going to die about 1 in 8 times. The only time that I would really recommend that you actually pay to make sure your trees don't die would be when you plant magic seeds. The reason for it is that they cost 200k and 25 coconuts is not that expensive when you compare the amount of experience slash money you'll lose if that magic tree fucking dies. So magic seeds are really the only thing I'm going to say yes go ahead and use your payment. Baskets of oranges, basket of, baskets of apples, they cost less than 2k around there so if you want to do that go ahead and do them but personally the only time I ever paid for a payment for a tree was when I did magic seeds and that's because of how expensive they are compared to how cheap the actual payment is. Fruit trees are a little bit different than farm than normal trees. You're going to plant them the same way so you're going to take a fruit tree seed and you're going to plant it make it into a sapling but the locations are a little bit different. There's one in Gnome Stronghold so that's like the normal trees but the other locations there's one in Catherby Beach there's one west of the Tree Gnome Village there's one in Brimhaven and there's one in Letia which is the Elf Village. Um, these take a lot longer to grow, but they don't vary in their growth time. Doesn't matter if you're planting apple seeds or if you're planting palm trees. They're going to grow at the same time, which is 720 minutes, or for those of you who can do that math, that's about 14 hours. So really, you're going to only be able to plant these about once a day. My personal recommendation, plant whatever the best you can or the best you can afford with these. That's pretty much the basic when it comes to trees. However, with fruit trees, you're planting so few of them, you may be able to fork over a little bit of extra money to get palm tree seeds because you're planting so few of them when you compare to the amount that you're going to be planting other tree seeds. Also, when it comes to payments for these, you can go ahead and pay or do the payments for these if you want. But then again, they only die one in eight times with super compost. So what you're going to want to do, use the payment if you want. It's cheap. It's affordable. I never did. Um... Another thing is that you will always harvest six fruit from these. So if you're harvesting curry trees, you're going to get six curry leaves, palm trees, six coconuts, papayas, six papayas. It doesn't matter if you use palm or if you use a super compost or not, or if you have secateurs, magic secateurs, you're always going to get six regardless. And also something I want to throw in when it comes to farming trees, you need to have a spade on you and an axe on you when you're doing uh, fruit trees if you're picking the fruit. If you're not picking the fruit, you can just pay 200 gold to the farmer nearby the patch and they'll actually chop it down for you. You can do the same thing with trees, which I highly recommend unless you're doing magic trees. But then again, even for speed's sake, you may want to go ahead and pay 200 gold to get it chopped down. But with fruit trees, you pretty much pick the fruit and you can just use the fruit on the tool leprechaun to note it for you. Then what you're going to need to do is actually cut the tree down and then use your spade to clear it before you can put another one in. Once you've picked the fruit, the farmer will no longer chop it down for you and you'll need to chop it down yourself. A quick side note about hops and bushes. I'm not talking about them 
mainly for the reason that they're not really worth it when it comes to XP playing. Uh, there's no real good route to actually incorporate them into an actual farm run, so I'm not going to talk about them for your XP sake. If you want, I can make a quick video on how to plant hops and bushes, but the only time you're ever really going to need to do this is when it comes to achievement diaries, and it's a real kind of one-off chance. If you do want me to make a guide about this, I can make a quick two-minute video just showing you how to actually plant hops and bushes. But for the purposes of this video, starting off farming, you really don't need to worry about planting these at all. Alright, enough talking. Let's talk about how we're going to level this up. So, we just talked about all these farm tri farm patches, right? Now we're not going to use them. No lie. Questing is going to be the best and easiest way to level up your farming until about level 33. What you're going to start off doing is by doing Fairy Tale Part 1. It's going to get you up to 17 farming. And it's going to get you your uh, Magic Secretaries, which is going to increase the yield from uh, allotments and herb patches by 10% when you wear them. And these are crucial for when you start training later on. So it's good to knock this off real quick. And it's going to get you up to 17 farming. It has no requirements. Next thing you're going to do is that's going to get you up to 17 farming, which is what you need for a forgettable tale of a drunken dwarf. There's some other quest requirements for this one as well. But once you've completed this one, it's going to get you up to 25 farming, which conveniently is a level that you need to do Garden of Tranquility, which will get you up to 30 farming. And then you will have the 29 farming requirement to do My Arms Big Adventure, which will get you 33 farming. And boom, you've got 33 farming. And you haven't played a piece of shit yet. The reason you want to do this path is because one... Early level farming is very slow. There is not a lot of good experience things to plant. You can't do trees, you can't do a lot of herbs, and the herbs you can plant are shit. They're not really that good. Not until you hit, I believe it's 32 uh, farming that you actually get to plant renars, and those are probably some of the best profit uh, herbs that you can plant. So following this route is actually going to get you up to 33 farming. You're also going to have the queen secretary, or the magic secretaries to increase your yield, and you're gonna have access to a disease-free patch on the top of the Troll Stronghold by doing Marm's Big Adventure. This is basically going to unlock the majority of the things you're going to need for training farming going forward, getting it up past level 50 or so. And once you've done all those quests, pretty much training farming just comes down to being efficient and consistent with your tree runs. Now, when I was training farming, I personally was able to do about two tree runs daily. That's if I stayed up long enough. And I was usually able to do about three tree runs if I, if I was playing all day. Three normal tree runs. My tree runs usually, I did one when I woke up. I did one about midday. And I did one right before I went to bed. Fruit trees, I always did them when I woke up in the morning. And sometimes if I was up long enough, I knew they were ready. I did them before I went to bed. And then I just did them at, ha or did them at midday the next day. But that's really what it comes down to is being consistent with your uh, farming to actually train this skill. It's the same thing with training or by doing allotments and herbs. Really it's just coming down to being consistent. Create a system for yourself so if you're doing Slayer, every task go check on your herbs or uh, go switch out your herbs, go plant them, harvest them, and continue that cycle. If you're fishing every 75 minutes or so go check everything. It's really coming down to being consistent, being disciplined about it. So. When you train farming, that's the one piece of advice I'm going to give you guys is create a system for yourself that you can follow and a system that you will be able to maintain for the long term in order to continue seeing the, these consistent gains in farming. All right, guys, that's going to do it for this video. So I hope you did enjoy this video. I hope it lived up to the expectations that you guys wanted for it. Again, if there's anything that you guys want me to add to this video, I'm more than happy to do like a quick subsection guide or whatever on it. But... I think this should cover the general basis of what you should be doing to start off farming. So, hope you guys enjoyed. If you did, remember to leave a like. If you want to see more content from this channel, go ahead and subscribe. And if you have other feedback from me, go ahead and leave it in the uh, comment section below. Join the clan chat if you want a place to hang out. Join the Discord if you're into that as well. That will be in the description. And with that being said, you guys have a great night. And thank you for watching.